My name is Isaac Mihangos. I'm an artist, student, and tech enthusiast, and this is my first impressions of the Sigma 20 millimeter f1.4 uh, for Canon. And all I have to say is that, wow, I'm completely blown away by everything that Sigma has done with this lens from the performance to the distortion to the way that it handles its contrast. Um, it really shows what Sigma has been able to do with the, with the art series. And I'm, it just completely made me eat my words when it came to Sigma. Um, but these are my first impressions of it. There's so much good stuff, some of it bad, and some of the improvements that I could definitely see with the Canon, with the Sigma art series. Um, but right now we're gonna do a switch just because I love the colors that the Sigma brings out. So we're gonna switch from the 16 to 35 to the 20 millimeter, just so you could see it right in front of you. Now, uh, don't let the outside fool you um, in terms of performance. In terms of everything, it is an amazing, amazing lens. 20 millimeters, I never thought I would say this, but it is a great, great uh, focal length to shoot portraits at. I do have a 16 to 35, and as I've discussed in the past, I would never take that out during a portrait session. That's because a 16 to 35 Mark II just distorts things like crazy when it's at 16. Even at 20, when I try to shoot it, the distortion was still there, and that's the one thing this lens crushes it at. You know, when I sh first shot it, um, it was, it wasn't giving it justice because the lighting was poor. Um, I didn't even have time to test out the bokeh, nor was it the prop. Like it wasn't, it was just not the proper situation. I did notice that there was no distortion. However, the reason I was being hard on it is because I had lost my faith in Sigma. And you know, um, I went to another photo shoot. This lens was the only lens that had 1.4. So I'm like, I probably should use it. And the first time I took it out and it was proper lighting, and I shot that first shot. It's just like, like I completely fell in love with the 20 millimeter. It's because I was so close to my subject that I was able to really isolate them and really get that like creamy bokeh. And it was just like, it made me eat my words. And I'm glad that I was able to test out this 20 millimeter. Um, the distortion is so, so minimal. It's like barely around the corners. The, the lens really made me want to shoot 20 millimeters the whole time. Although I had the 16 to 35 and I had that focal range, that, that option to shoot 35 millimeters, this lens, this lens just like, no, you, you're supposed to shoot 20 millimeters right now. And that's because it fixed that distortion. And, you know, Sigma just completely, completely crushed it, really taking in the, the dynamics, the design of the lens. Um, one thing that, that is really weird and it's not, it's not even the lens's fault. It's actually, Lightroom's fault for some odd reason whenever I go and uh, I try to fix it in post and I use the auto correct uh, for straightenings it actually makes the faces wider which seems really weird because it doesn't resolve an issue it just causes causes an issue um, in terms of focusing I know that in the past the 35 millimeter 1.4 had a huge huge struggle with the back focusing issue however Sigma really listened to their customers really went out of their way, well, not out of their way, but really focused on that issue. And when I shot the center focus points, it was tack sharp, which is amazing, which is like, I was blown away by the level of sharpness, the speed of accuracy. I wouldn't say it's a 70 to 200. It's more of a 24 to 70, which is really good. 2.8 Mark one, uh, not Mark two. Mark two is amazing when it comes to the focusing. Um, when it came to center, center focus points, it was phenomenal when it came to the side focus points i thought i was going to struggle way way more because the center focus point is the most important one to me um it struggled slightly when i went on the outer focus points but that's expected and it surprisingly didn't bug me whatsoever the colors on this man can we just like talk about them because they are insane the colors on this the combination of canon plus sigma it's they're like phenomenal they're so natural um it's something that I wish Canon would really pick up because like the colors are more accurate when I shoot with this Sigma lens and with my 35 millimeter, which is weird because it's like a, the native lens doesn't have those colors, but the Sigma does. Um, I'm fully blown away by the combo. I wish this is something that um, Canon would pick up, especially when it comes to that contrast. I don't know how Sigma does it, but that contrast is just like, it's just right. It's not too much, not too little. And I find myself getting it right in camera more and more. Um, less of all this, I'll fix it in post, which is always good. It makes you focus on getting it right in camera. The colors are amazing. It just, it's just a, like it can't get over them. And um, yeah, like I wish it's something Canon would just pick up on the regular. Um, in terms of lens beginning, I mean, um, I only shoot 1.4 to 2.8. 
which means that the beginning is going to be there for me. That's that heavy beginning really doesn't mean too much because I, I always been a fan of the heavy beginning when it comes to like the can the the lenses. So if it's naturally there, I really won't do anything. But something a little post processing can't fix. Um, in terms of chromatic aberration, it's non-existent at this point. And if I did have to like look at the chromatic aberration, I didn't notice it during this entire set. I think I would have to pixel peek to like a degree of insanity. And it's something that US photographers shouldn't worry just because it's such a high-end lens. Um, and even you, like your your viewers and your audience won't even tell. In terms of sharpness, man, it's like a it's like a knife from Hell's Kitchen. Enough said about the sharpness. It's insane. Didn't even have to push like fake sharpening in Lightroom. Um, but yeah, it's overall amazing lens. I'm completely blown away with it. Like the, the colors and the contrast and the bokeh, um, like really impressed me and it really, and it, and it just made me eat my words. Uh, I'm going to pick up a 20 millimeter and I might just go like all Sigma at this point. I would highly, highly suggest this lens. I've had no problems with it uh, aside from like the minor tweaks that they could do. Hell, even Canon could learn something from Sigma when it comes to the colors. Um, but overall amazing, amazing lens. I'm going to go, uh, live on Instagram to answer a few questions, see what everybody else wants to hear about the lens. But yeah, that's my, that's like my tentative, that's like my tentative review, first impressions about the lens, Sigma, amazing job. I am, I was wrong. And this lens and your art series are amazing. Yeah, so we're gonna go Facebook Live and hopefully someone has questions aside from Jeremy. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's only like two people. Damn boy, what, what is up? <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm just uh, editing some pics and uh, gonna talk about lenses and gear uh, Shout out to my homie Brian um, Yeah, we're just doing a video right now, but hopefully someone joins um, You just Go into Lightroom and then you press quit <laughs> Delete this. It's all in the tone curves. So Before and after delete your account who's in the my, my, Okay, no one joined. So, if you have any questions, just leave. Hey, shout out to Jeremy for sticking around. But if you have any questions about the about the lens, just leave them in the comment section. Thanks for joining, Jeremy and friends. But uh, I'm gonna go because it's been six minutes and no one joined. I guess I'm, I'm not I'm not cute enough for it. But yeah, bye, Jeremy. Say bye. Say bye to the video, Jeremy. Say 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 bye. All right. Bye bye.